everybody welcome to another video this one's uh, another bike tank but it's, it's quite a large one it's off uh, a Yamaha FJR 1300 and I've, got, I've got two of these today one in silver which is this one and another one in uh, Yamaha uh, purplish blue they call it so I thought it would be uh, interesting for people to go through the various stages that I normally do on, on different things and different ways to do it. Now, people would have seen me strip tanks completely with a uh, paint stripper to get it back to bare metal, prime, etc, etc. Uh, or you can do it this way. Now, this had, this had quite a dent at the front, which I managed to get most of it out via... Um, I've got some dent removal tools that go through the top and can go through the bottom. I managed to get most of it out and I just filled the, the top bit. So the fill is about, I suppose, about two to three millimeters thick at that point. And there's a, a little dent on the side here, which you can see me doing now. So what I'm, what I'm aiming to do is, is just touch up those, those areas and then do the whole tank in silver. Uh, this is a used tank that the, uh, it's a mate of mine, he's got two FJRs, uh, one in silver, one in, or one with a silver tank, one with a blue tank. Uh, and he had a, a problem where some stuff fell down and, and damaged the tanks, but he wants to use the bike. So we got a couple, or he got a couple of second-hand tanks, uh, and I said I'd, I'd do them up for him. So that's where we are, really. So you'll see the first part just doing some standing, which incidentally was the, Metabo, the new Metabo sander that I, I bought about three, four months ago, the SXE 150, which I actually bought another one in the end. I bought one with a 5mm uh, oscillation and one with a 2.5. I'll do a separate video on that uh, later, just as an update to the unboxing that I did, because they are really, really good sanders. Anyway, back to the video. So, you see, what we've done is we've sanded down, we've filled and sanded down the areas that with the damage, and now we're just using a little GF3 just as a, you know, it's, it's a good, good repair, so I don't need loads of build on it. Um, so we're just doing a bit of priming. You'll see the top there. That was actually rusty there, believe it or not. This tank was in really, the way Yamaha do it, you can tell it's a, a, a nicer bike, if that makes sense. Nice is probably the wrong word. But a bit more money, a bit more money has been spent on it because they actually lacquered the underneath of the tank and everything. They've sort of done it well. Um, I think they're about fourteen grand now, fourteen thousand pounds, which is about twenty thousand US dollars. So they're not a cheap bike. Not expensive, but not cheap either. So you'll see, I'm just doing the the three parts that need it, which is this little little edge that had a dent on it, which has been filled and then sanded down to bare metal. This patch here, which is a large patch of filler, uh, because there's quite a few small dents in this hole in this area here, so I flattened it all off. Uh, or got the dents out as much as I can, flattened it off, filled it just to give it a smooth edge, really. And now we're just doing various little bits of spot priming, keeping the lamp on it because it's quite chilly. It's about 10 degrees Celsius. Uh, if you watch some of my other videos, you'll see that. Putting the lamp on primer straight away, a lamp or, or in this case a heat gun, on primer straight away it doesn't seem to have any effect on it. Uh, base coat, I haven't used water base, I normally use solvent base. But solvent based base coat, it doesn't have any effect on it. But if you if you rush in with a heat gun in cold weather on um, top coat, a it may not it may not spread as well, or you know. Um, even out so to speak as well if you heat it up straight away but you also can get some small um, solvent um, trapped in it solvent pop as they call it so you just have to be careful but i've found there's no problem at all with primer and there's no problem at all with solvent based coat with getting some heat on it straight away in the cold weather obviously if it's warm you don't need to bother so you'll see we're just building up a, a few layers here just to bear in mind we're going to sand those those parts Afterwards, you'll see you see on the first part of the video we're sanding the uh, filler down. So now we're just using a it's it's a, a high-ish build. It's not that not, not that higher build. It's a 1.2 tip on the gun, 
so it can't be that thick because you, it just doesn't spray properly um, and it's an etch primer so it's where, where you've sanded some of the parts down obviously you go through on some parts you go through to the metal so you need something that's going to adhere nicely to the metal so that it, 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 well, so it lasts really so it's really kind of last so we've done we've done our various if you see the the um, the primer here is slightly darker it's because when I finished the, the, the filming of that I uh, I wanted a little bit more on it so I just mixed some up and I normally mix like a black and a, a white to get the colour and I just put a bit more black and white it doesn't it matters little because there's a few coats of top coat going on which is with a W400 uh, so I, I just thought it was more interesting for people to see the processes that you go through uh, before you actually do the spray, because normally I just put the spray. Mm-hmm. So this part here, we, we just we just get in down so that it's flat between the original uh, painted tank, you know, the lacquer of the tank, and the primer that we've put on it. So we're just making sure that it's a nice feathered edge, so that you can't see any lines when you paint. Because if it, if it's slightly proud, and you won't see it, you see I'm always feeling in my hand. Because it's the only way you get to know really is, is by feeling the imperfection with your hand. It's no good using your eyes because it, it just they're just not good enough to detect it. So you can see we've we've done the various sanding of the areas that have been primed, and now we're just roughing up with a 600 grit, again using a Metabo sander, just to get a nice keen surface on the um, on the primed stroke lacquered tank so that we can get a, a good top coat on there and you know know it's going to adhere properly and stay there so it's just a matter of preparing everything so you don't have to uh, you know it's questionable whether you're actually going to save time by doing it this way but what i was going to say you don't you don't have to prime the whole tank all the time uh, because it, the, the, the finish you'll get doing it this way is just as good but it's questionable whether it, it does save time to find the high tank or not. In this case, obviously, I didn't think it was worth it, and I thought it was probably worth showing people a different way that I do it uh, if you're not going to find the whole tank. Because, you know, primer for me is probably the worst part of spraying because it's, it goes everywhere. It's horrible, horrible stuff, really. Um, so now we come to the base coat. So we're using the W400 and if you saw my previous or, or I think it's previous but one video to this you'll see that we use the W400 uh, Bellaria well it's actually a 90th edition but it's exactly the same as the Bellaria um, we use that for doing a, uh, a flow coat it was on top of a, uh, a metal flake tank we did and the, the finish was absolutely as flat as flat could be. Really, really good finish. And now we're using exactly the same setup, but I thought I'd use it for base coat just to show that if you if you are the sort of person that can only afford one gun, only wants one gun, or whatever has only got one gun, then you can do everything with that one gun. You know, a, 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 I was going to say a true professional, but a, a, a professional would normally have one gun for uh, their base coat and one gun for their clear coat or normally a few guns for each because one gun might be better at metallic one gun might not be i I actually missed i I think i lost to be honest because i'm sure i recorded it this is about six to eight weeks after i actually did the tank that i'm narrating it and you'll notice that the tank's already had one coat of silver on it uh, and I'm not sure where that recording went. As I say, I'm sure I recorded it, but I can't seem to find it anywhere because I normally turn the camera off each time uh, between coats so that it's not just keep up, keep on recording, recording because it goes through loads of batteries, especially when it's cold. So I'm not sure where the, the first one went, but I thought there was enough here to uh, so that you can see that you know um, what I'm doing really and get an idea for. Uh, for how I'm doing, how I'm doing this, and different people do different things. You, you'll notice on this one, this silver, uh, this is a Yamaha uh, tank, as I said before. 
and the the silver is what I use. I got, I've got two types of silvers. I have a, a Mercedes silver, Mercedes car Mercedes silver, which is a 744, and I also have a Honda NH642M, which is a, a much darker silver. And I find by mixing the two. I can get more or less any silver I need. So I start off with the dark silver and then add the Mercedes light silver until I, until I get a spray out card that's near enough the same as the original or, or the same as the original. And then just put a little bit of um, a little bit of panel wipe or something, something that's shiny over the top of the spray out card just to see what it looks like with lacquer if you're comparing it against the lacquered part. Uh, that you want to that you want to match, and I find those two silvers, the Mercedes and the Honda, give me virtually anywhere I want. Now this one here is 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 nearly all Mercedes silver, so it's quite a light silver, but it was a match for the rest of match for the rest of the uh, the bike or the silvers on the rest of the bike, which is what my friend wanted. So that's what we've done. Apologies for the camera angle, because. I actually took it off the uh, the hanging wire, and I should have moved the camera down slightly, but I forgot. It, it's some, sometimes you sort of obviously you want to do the, the paintwork as best you can, and the camera is is just another thing to think of, and you don't always think about it. But I think most of it come out good enough for you to see and see what I'm doing. So I've you know gone ahead with the video and, and put it up. So I think it's you know it'd, it'd be worth it to uh, some people to see. Now there's a few way of a few ways of doing silvers. Uh, I've just done another tank in a in a Honda silver, a much darker silver, um, which I did it the other way. And so there's two ways of doing it. I find there's two ways of doing it anyway. Now there's going to be people that say, "Oh no, you should have done it this way. You should have done it that way." And th as I say, there are different ways of doing it. But what you can get with silvers, which you can get with some pearls, etc., is that you get you'll get dark patches where, where you've gone maybe slightly too heavy or slightly too close with the spray gun it looks mottled what they call a mottled effect so it doesn't look consistent all the way so i find there's two ways of doing that you can spray the tank as you would so that it's it's what you think is about right and then you do a, a drop coat to bring the silvers up so that the the little the little uh, metallic particles in the silvers Stand up slightly to catch the light, so it it, it, it catches the light better uh, and looks more metallic, I suppose you'd call it. So you you normally drop your pressure and or move the gun back slightly uh, and put your silvers on. So you do a whole coat of the whole tank, just a drop coat, to even it up and make the silver stand up. Or you can do it the way I'm doing this one. So what I did with the the other tank that I was mentioning just now. The Honda tank. I did it the 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 way you would do it to, for a drop coat. But this one, what I'm doing, and you'll see the last coat coming up in a second. I'm just making it very wet. And if you make it very wet, you also get a good even silver effect, which I think you'll see looking at the video. I've got some pictures at the end to show you what it looks like when it's finished, and you can you can see it, it comes out really well. And I actually did the top coat to this, which I'll upload in a separate video because I think it's worth, you know, putting it in a separate video. I did it with the WS400 iWatter, which is the first video I've done with it. Uh, so if you're interested in that, that will probably be the next video that goes up after this. But you'll see when you're putting it on, you start to get a slightly mottled, mottled effect sometimes. I wanted a, a few coats on this simply because there's been a, as, as you saw there's a few repairs to it so i normally find you know if two coats is sufficient then that's great but normally three coats uh with the last one being quite thick normally sorts it out obviously you don't want to be too too heavy on it because it will run and what i've been doing you see the heat lamp there the heat lamp's been going on it you, you finish the first you finish the coat leave it for two or three minutes then put the heat lamp on it uh, and it, it should dry it from the inside out and it speeds up the process and uh, stops it getting too too runny especially if you're putting it on thick uh, like you see you know in the video you'll see that it's going on quite thick so i hope you like the video uh there's probably some things i i haven't covered that i should have done but 
it's always difficult, especially if it's quite a long time afterwards, uh, remembering what you did and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But you'll you'll see. As I say, the camera should have been a bit lower, but once you've done it, you've done it. You'll see the photos coming up at the end here, and I think you'll find it. Uh, oh, I think you'll agree that it's, it's come out okay, considering the uh, the different damage that was done to the tank. Uh, and as I say, top coat one coming up soon with a WS400. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to all the subscribers. And um, this is going up just after Christmas. So happy new year to everybody and a good 2021. Cheers. Bye.